Rural Heritage on RFD TV is brought to you by Rural Heritage Magazine, a bi monthly magazine featuring articles about farming and logging with draft animal power, small scale diversified family farming and homesteading, and other aspects of our rich rural heritage. Rural Heritage Magazine, borrowing from yesterday to do the work of today. For subscription information, please call 319 362 3027 or order online at www.ruralheritage.com. For this hay in a day, what they're teaching is you want to mow it in the morning and wrap it for balance at night so you don't lose any more carbohydrates through respiration in the field as possible. So we want to get to 55% moisture as fast as possible. Well, if you cut the hay off from the stem in the morning, it doesn't know it's cut. You haven't crushed any of the leaves, so picture it like you haven't crimped the garden hose. It doesn't know it's cut. It continues with photosynthesis all day, needing water. It's now drawing water up the stem like it normally does because it's not crimped, but it's cut off from the ground. So what's the first thing to dry? The stem. What's the last thing to dry? The leaves. That's exactly what you want to keep your leaves on in the baler. When you condition the hay, you cut it off from the ground and you crimp the garden hose. So when it dries, the first thing to dry is the leaves because they start to respirate and they can't draw water from anywhere so they dry out way before the stems. Now you can see I haven't gotten rid of my disc bind with conditioning yet because I'm not sure for dry hay that I still don't want that conditioner. But for baleage, which we do 90% of our forage is baleage, which is about 50% moisture, um, you don't want any conditioning really and you want it laid out as wide as possible. So if I'm mowing 24 feet, I'm laying it out 24 feet wide here to get as much sun on the leaves as possible. Go out in the afternoon, evening and round bale that 20 acres. Now we're going to turn around, so hang on Joe. First rear steering and then front steering. The horses get onto this pretty quick. So I'm doing my dressage at both ends. Whoa. So you have three switches to run the sickles. I'm gonna turn them off for now. And none of them will work unless you keep your foot on this pedal all the time. So the whole time I'm mowing, my foot's on there. If I see a fawn, a child, a dog, a cat, anything, just take your foot off, everything stops. All the sickles stop. You also have the fourth lever here runs the driving the ground stake. Maybe you got that good. I think I got it as good as it can. And that drive, that's driving a two by four inch solid iron into the ground, 16 to 20 inches deep. If it won't go on the ground, it'll pick the front tires up, like on a gravel driveway. And that is your portable hitching post. So we'll bring two horses. See, you can't drive the horses over the tongue, obviously. Right. So you gotta bring right. your horses out individually, put your two horses in the middle on the lines. There's a spot to tie their lead lines to their halters. And you go back and you get two more horses. And that's your portable hitching post so they don't run away with your machine. It's run by a 20, I forget what he said, 23 horse Honda. Okay, team. You gotta be able to drive with one hand. Um, usually I drive four in the lines, but I went to driving two in the lines and two on jockey sticks, just because it gets to be a lot on one hand all day because you are steering. The horses can't steer the mower. You have to steer the mower hydraulically with the front tires. You're doing that with your hand. I'm doing that with my hand. So I gotta be able to drive the horses with this one hand. You'll just see my wrist twist. Yeah. And that's me driving the mares. There's 24 foot of total cut. You seldom have all 24 foot. Either you miss a little hay or you overlap by a foot or something. But <clears throat> there's a lot going on with four horses and six hydraulic levers and one foot pedal. and. So you're usually mowing 21 to 24 feet. I can mow about six to eight acres an hour. I can mow 20 acres on five gallons of gas. So about a quart of gas per acre. My son can mow about the same number of acres per hour, but he's mowing about at about six gallons of diesel per hour. So he's about a gallon of diesel per acre. I'm about a quart of gas per acre. He has about a $25,000 disc bind and a $20,000 tractor. 
Oh, Michael wants me to show you. This year, for one of the updates, they put a spot here. Can you see the word spare sickles? Yeah. And then you open this up. <clears throat> he has gloves in there right away and your spare sickles and some other parts hidden inside the tongue. Nice. All your hydraulic hoses run underneath the tongue, inside the tube, so everything's quite organized. I think it's a well-made machine. I'm burning about five gallons of gas to mow 20 acres. So that's about a quart per acre, 20 quarts for 20 acres. And I'm mowing about six to six to eight acres an hour, six to seven acres an hour. He mows between six and eight acres an hour. He mows, so he's mowing the same number of acres per hour, but he's doing it on about six gallons of diesel fuel an hour. So he's mowing about a gallon of diesel per acre. I'm mowing about a quart of gas per acre. He has about mm, 40,000, $45,000 investment in equipment. I have about $36,000 worth of equipment, not counting my horses. So. And that equipment requires maintenance if this one that doesn't necessarily No, much. this one obviously needs maintenance, but you're right. talking about a, a 23 horsepower Honda engine and uh, hydraulic pumps and stuff. I mean, there's so much more going on with a tractor and a disc bind. You have, for that to cut that fast, that cutter head's running 9,000 RPMs. My sickles are rotating at uh, between 650 and 800 strokes a second, or not a second, a minute. 650 to 800 strokes a minute. So 9,000 rounds per minute or 800 rounds per minute. So you can guess which one's gonna have longer life. Does the sickle bar promote uh, regrowth better than a haybine? I would say definitely, when, especially when that's dull. When that's right. dull, it just rips and tears just by sheer force. You can see right now, if you take a shot, see a little bit of black smoke coming out of International? Yep. International guys love that, but the guy paying the fuel bill doesn't. He can mow that fast because he's burning fuel that hard. They've had enough of a break, so we're going to click these three on. Three switches, three sickles. I'm going to speed it up. Step on my safety. Whoa! Step on my safety switch. Get ready to steer. And then I'll tell them. Okay, team. I've mowed with everything from McCormick number nines, McCormick number sevens. Pull behind PTO, John Deere sickle mowers. Um, I've mowed with INJs, pull behind motorized. Them are pretty excellent, but you still require a, a Teamster per team of horses and every nine foot of hay being cut. So if you're short of Teamsters, you know, and you want to mow this much hay, you need three Teamsters and six horses. But them are good mowers. But I've mowed with about everything, and we're still in production agriculture. Katrina and I have been at this 23 years. And whether we like it or not, we're still in production agriculture. So we have to cover a certain amount of acres a day to feed a certain amount of cows to pay the bills. And with our grass only, we have to put up really good forage for the cows. They can't, you know, we, you can't come in and rescue them with some grain. So we have to have forage with energy. I, I would equate it to the guy that thought of putting a chunk of iron on the end of a stick and calling it a hammer. Or a guy that put a wheel under a bucket and called it a wheelbarrow. To me, it's a game changer. My boys are getting older. One's going to be coming home from tech school here in a few hours. He's going away to tech school. Um, he's already got job applications out. You know what I mean? Another boy is a senior next year. I'll be down to one boy in a year and a wife. We have to have a way to get the work done with less Teamsters. That's where the tractor came in after World War II. Well, I don't want any more tractors. This is a force multiplier is what the military would call it for the horses. It's no longer than you getting a longer handle on a wrench because you can't get the nut off. So you get a longer handle so you can create more torque. This enables my horses to get more done. And I still get to use the horses. Now tonight, I can still go do a water wagon for the cows with the same horses with no motor, with just a four cart and an old wagon and a water barrel. So it's, it's not like you've wrecked the horses. It's just in this case, you've given the horses more leverage to knock down more hay in less time for you. And I don't want the horses wore out. You know, if you came out here with three teams and ground drive mowers and knocked down 15 acres this morning, the problem is when them horses go in at noon, if you push them that hard, they're gutted. They don't really want to come back out and round bale up that 15 acres that afternoon. You push them hard. Well, you push them for this 15, 20 acres, they're by no means wore out. This red mare over here, Reba, you just got her walking good at that point. You got the edge taken off of her. They learn how to push this pretty quick. 
I have not had a horse yet act up. We started a three-year-old perching for a young lady this spring. She had maybe 40 days on her. It's probably our third time on the moor. I said, grab that young perching. We put her on here and we just walked off. I have, yesterday was Eve and Reba's first day on the moor. They were both nursing heavy this spring, just fresh. I didn't use them in first crop. So yesterday was their first day on the moor. This is their second day on the moor. I think because they're a prey animal and this is out in front of them, it's not coming from the rear to jump on them like a cat. It's out in front of them, they can see it, so they're like, I don't know, it does not set them off. The turning requires them to sidestep a little bit. Is that, yeah. is that like other implements? It is like um, Jean and Hawing to back, it, back something up, you know, that's touchy. It's more like a sidestepping for dressage, and I'm no dressage expert, but I know then people work hard to get their horse to side pass all the way across the arena at different gates. Well, these horses are just basically side passing at each end. Um, the, the difference is they don't have a choice. That When I hit them hydraulics, it's coming over at them. And they learn to side pass, to step right around. It's amazing how fast um, that the inside horses learn to go slow, the outside horses learn to go fast. At the very other end, it switches. But, you know, they're not dummies. These American Brabants especially, I, I don't know. I think they make us look good sometimes because they're, they're smart horses. I could get some real arguments going and say, I don't know what it would be like to train them other breeds, but these are easy. There's some people have got land that this mower wouldn't be really well suited for, do you think? I don't know because Jonas Schlebach and his sons who invented this yeah. have steep ground and small fields. When I say steep, I mean Charm, Ohio. You can stand on Jonas's farm and look all the way across town to Lanny Farms on the other side of town. That whole town's in a bowl. They make it work on that steep ground in them little fields. I don't know what kind of ground it wouldn't work on. It doesn't like stones. I have stones. We have to pick our stones or roll them in. I mean, them open sickles are not gonna like stones. It doesn't like rough ground. We've made a lot of ruts this year because the amount of rainfall and these extreme weather events, you have to do something with the ruts. If you drive them sickles into mud, it will stop. Which is a good thing, because stopping's better than breaking. When hay is laying over, is that called lodge hay? Yes, lodge hay. That last 20 acres we just finished a few minutes ago, that was lodged two or three times. We had a bad storm from the other night from the south, and it tipped my hay elevator actually over and wrecked our hay elevator. But anyways, it had lodged from the north before, so we had a bad storm from the south, kind of picked it back up, so I determined it was time to mow while it was up at all. But yeah, it's it'll mow lodge hay. It obviously mows it better one direction than the other, but there's pretty much nothing that stops the sickle other than dirt clumps or rocks or something that shouldn't be in your hay field. We have 150 acres of second crop to cut. Really? Because wow. of the grass only truck and everything, we have to run a lot of acres of just hay. So for someone that runs a lot of hay, or if you're out west, and you, you know, I can name some names, but people that are just hay, maybe one crop, because they're high altitude, and hay is your crop, this is a game changer for covering acres and not having to. Well, if you're keeping 12 big workhorses, and I know this because I sold one of Hannah's stud colts out to a ranch in Montana that's 60,000 acres. They feed with 12 teams all winter, 12 teams. And they kick them out all summer. They don't use them. They go, farm they go farm mechanically. But they get them horses up every fall and feed with them all winter. Well, them horses wouldn't have to be kicked out on pasture all summer. A couple of these mowers and rotate four horses, you know, run them hard for two or three hours, rotate in four fresh horses. I don't think with two of these, it'd be unreasonable to mow 80 acres a day. And I can say that with confidence. If you had 16 horses, so you could rotate your fours and two of these mowers, you could mow 80 acres a day consistently. They wouldn't be wore out. Then you could still bale behind if you wanted with your tractors, with big square balers or whatever they're using out there. At a fraction of the fuel. You're, um, you're not, well, what do you say to somebody that's saying that you're not really doing horse farming because you're, you're all modern? I'm farming for a living. I choose to use horses, so I choose to figure out how to get it done. Um, I'm not even gonna get into a debate that, well, if you added a motor or if you added wheels, you know, then they need to get rid of their manure shredder too. They need to go back to a sledge that slides on the ground and they need to pitch it off, but not with a metal pitchfork. They need to handcraft a wooden pitchfork and muck that off there. So what, what stage do you want to stop at? Do you want to stop at 1812, 1860 when they had a binder? 
do you want to stop at 1920? What's the, this is just- You're I, not doing a reenactment. I'm not doing a reenactment. You're doing what you love. Yes, we, there's nobody off the farm here. There's no social security payments coming in. We don't sign up for any aid programs. We, my wife doesn't work off the farm. We farm on the farm and we take jobs off the farm with the horses. There's no, uh, so I'm just looking to get my work done. I'm not looking yep. to get in a debate. Yep. Yeah, yep. You, whatever stage you want to choose at, I want as little technology as I can to get the work done because I'm not a good electrician. I'm not, I have like five minutes of patience with something that I don't understand. You're trying to save money. Trying to save money and, and make it so my horses can do the work. It's a force multiplier. Like I said, it's no longer than you getting a longer lever to get a nut off. Yep. It just helps them get the work done. It was about a year ago that you first saw this mow. Yes, you aired it after Horse Progress Days. And and you knew right away that if, if, if it worked, it was a game changer. Yep. I seen it, and I seen the video, and I was I think I was texting you right away, like, how do I get a hold of this man? I'm out here mowing six, seven feet of hay at a time with horses, or nine and a half feet with a tractor that's sucking fuel down, and a disc bind that's 15 years old and runs 9,000 RPMs. You know that's just a ticking time bomb for money. And I knew, because I was leaning towards buying I and J mowers, but then I was thinking about workforce. You know, I need to buy two or three of them to mow with that will mow. Right. So the mower was built by Jonas Schlebach and his sons in Charm, Ohio. And I guess I and J were gracious enough to work with Jonas Schlebach quite a bit. I and J, I think, I'm not an expert. I think they were the first ones to import these German sickles. And everybody pays rights to the company in Germany. And these German sickles have been around a long time. They're a double acting wobble and a double sickle, no guards. So that's how they're able to mow through down hay, you know, and previously cut stuff without plugging. Um, but INJ helped Jonas Schlebach and his sons with some ideas. You, and I don't know if you've ever seen these walk behind mowers they have in Europe or for mowing around fences and stuff, but that's where this center double wobble gearbox came from, them walk behind mowers. So they have this in the front. They have, I think that's a nine foot sickle as well, or eight and a half. There's two nine foot sickles on the sides. Um, I should start out with, they built a prototype that they showed at Horse Progress Days, was it last year? Yep. And that prototype, you know, works good and stuff, but they had like nine things they wanted to change. So they built two mowers this winter, one for me and one for themselves to rent out in the community. And they did nine or 10 changes from the prototype. I think it's 10 inches longer in here for the horses, providing a little more room. They moved the hitching posts, which is a safety feature, the stake that drives in the ground, they moved that forward it used to be in this horse's face a little bit. Um, when I went to rubber tires versus steel wheels, we had to change the angle some to get the sickle the right level. This was the big hang up. This was the big hang up why they wouldn't uh, price it. They, they were trying to figure out a way to get the hay to divide over the center gearbox. The whole point of this mower is to get hay done in a day, this hay in a day. You mow it in the morning, you wrap it for baleage that evening to save all the carbohydrates you can for grass-based dairies. Well, they wanted that hay out as flat as can be to dry as fast as it can. They couldn't get the hay to come off this gearbox smoothly, not in clumps. So this little rotary sickle deal, which looks very mean, um, that took some trial and error. Once they got that and they were happy with it, then they were willing to put out a price. So we bought ours last winter. The price has went up this year with steel prices and all the updates. So you have a two or four horse neck yoke, because you can run this with two horses. I like running four because we tend to mow, like right now we have 40 acres down, we mowed 20 acres this morning. And, and then the horses aren't so tired for the afternoon shift. Um, you have different holes back there for two or four horse eveners. You have hydraulic reservoir. You have a gas tank. You have their pat, I don't know if it's patented, but they've come up with this spring loaded platform. They have this on their four carts as well. Family Farm Innovations, FFI is the name of their company. So this, being on steel wheels, as a lot of the plain people are, this spring platform becomes very, very nice. Self-leveling Self seat is theirs. Um, it's a very nice seat. I tend to stand up just because I like to see over my horses and the sickles. I sit down on the ends, see if Joe Mishka texted me or anything. But when I'm running, I stand up. Uh, this tongue here goes on the rear because there's a transport mode. You'd, you would uh, shut it off with your wheel straight there and you'd shut it off with your wheel straight here. You take that tongue to the back and you pull one pin you put that tongue in, you pull it backwards like a wagon auto steering running gear, and you pull it backwards down the road, and you could transfer from farm to farm. That's another thing I think would, I think two or three small farmers, just like back in the day with thrashing machines and everything else, they shared machinery. I think two or three small plain farmers could get together, 
have one of these, share it between two or three farms, quit battling 90 year old mowers, and uh, you know, you can knock down 10, 12 acres at one farm, run over there and knock down 10, 12 acres, run to the third farm, knock down 10, 12 acres. Everybody's got hay down, everybody can share payments, and you're running something modern that you're not stop backing up constantly. Are these for locking? Them for locking them up for transport. They also have hydraulic locks. So when I raised them to come home, I threw the hydraulic locking valves so they can't come down. But if you're transporting down the road to take some of the wobble out of it, you could put them arms over just like the old sickle bars. But that spring too. Uh, it, when you put it down, that spring takes some of the weight off the oh, sickle okay. so it floats on the ground better. Yeah. They've been experimenting with different shoes. They have adjustable shoes. I, I chose to go back to the Standard three inch shoes, three inches how high I cut my grass. Um, what else? We got brakes on this one. This one has everything you can have. So we have hydraulic brakes, front steering, rear steering, hitching posts, rubber tires. And I think this would retail for a little over $36,000, which to a, uh, a horse farmer would be like, wow, price anything anymore. Price a disc spine, you're talking twenty five dollars to $50,000 for a disc spine. And you still got to have a hundred and some horse tractor to put on it. So if you're committed, if you enjoy working horses and you're committed to working horses, and you have to run a significant number of acres, you know you, you could spend a lot more than that on a truck. You could, and you know, everything that goes forward is through a hydraulic hose. So you have no moving parts. So this is all hoses. All hoses, and hydraulic oil runs everything. So there's really, other than the wobbles and the engine running, there's no moving parts. So we take good care of greasing the wobbles. And grease this program is available for purchase. To order your copy, please call 319-362-3027 or visit www.ruralheritage.com. Rural Heritage is a bi-monthly magazine dedicated to draft animal farming and logging as well as other aspects of our rich rural heritage. It is published by Mishka Press, which also offers a complete line of back-to-the-land books, DVDs, and calendars. Call or write for a catalog or subscription information. Or visit our website at www.ruralheritage.com.